Hello, everybody. Welcome to day 10 of the Shadow Work Challenge. You are now a third of the way through this challenge. Congratulations. I know that this has not been easy. It wasn't supposed to be easy. That's why it's called Shadow Work. But I'm so, so, so happy that you guys are sticking with it. Again, as I said earlier with Catherine Edwards, we have over 500 people globally doing this. And we have almost 200 of those 500 people participating in our support group on Signal. And once again, if you have not joined that Signal support group, I will put a link to it down in the description box below. It's also on my community tab. So let's go ahead and have a look again about what today brought you as far as this challenge is concerned. All right, so Thursday, November 10th, day 10. You are now a third of the way to the challenge. You've got this. Look how far you've come. Of course, today you started by making up your bed. If you don't make your bed up, um, I make my bed up all the time. So I don't feel like my day even starts if my bed isn't made up. And then your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. Again, this allows your digestive system a chance to actually break right? To let it kind of relax a little bit. A lot of people, I know a, a lot of adults especially, will mindlessly snack at night. And so I want you to start to look at those triggers of food. Again, because we're looking at the dosha system. And I, again, I don't believe in diets. I think you should be eating for your dosha. So I want you to start to really understand though, where you're, especially if you're more kapha based, where are you using food as a distraction or as like a drug, right? To get the endorphins, especially at night, if emotions are coming up at night, are you using food as a supplement for those emotions? And if you find yourself wanting to snack after your dinner, why not journal about it instead and, and see that as interesting that maybe there's a motion coming up you need to look at, all right? Now, today, once again, you did the kickboxing again, and I will put, if you missed the video this morning that I did with Catherine, I will link that in the description box below because we went into detail in our conversation about what the kickboxing is actually doing for you energetically. And as I said in that video, I had such an overwhelming response to the kickboxing. I knew that the kickboxing was gonna do the trick for some people, but I did not imagine how many people this actually affected. And I'm so, so happy about that. Now, of course, if the kickboxing was too much for you, you could replace it with the bar, no problem. No problem. All right, and of course, your cold shower. And then today for meditation, you could either pick the sound bowl healing or the 15 minute all meditation. Well, one thing I noticed too, which I talked about with Catherine is that a lot of people were very triggered by the all meditation. That was a surprise to me to see how many people got irritated, so they were feeling restless. And so I wanna let you know that that means that the all meditation worked. So if you felt really triggered, I would really challenge you when you have the choice here to pick the meditation that triggers you the most, because that's where the friction is happening. So something is happening within your psyche where it's hitting a boulder, it's creating friction. And that friction is something we want to look at. And so if you guys were some of the people that were experiencing that, let me know if you're going to keep going with the all meditation. Of course, today, you're journaling your food as always to try to figure out how you're reacting to certain foods, and then you've got your journaling to do. Now, again, you needed to look three people in the eyes and smile at them. And then this is when we're going to start to go deeper into the shadow work now. So we've, we're a third of the way in. So now you're going to have some exercises and experiments to do for emotional purposes. And this is going to, it's going to get really deep here soon, guys. So today was kind of the first um, venture into that, where you, is there an old friend or family member you lost, lost touch with? If so, send them a simple text or email telling them that you're thinking about them, you hope they're well, and you love them. Please know you can do this for multiple people. And so if there's someone in your life, I'm going to challenge you, at least one person that you've lost touch with, can you send them just a little text and say hi? I bet you miss them. All right. Once again, you're turning off all electronics one hour before bed. Instead, read a book or write more in your journal. Go to bed before 10 p.m. Bonus challenge, drink 24 ounces of water today to help the, the detox from the exercise. If you are a meat eater, can you try to go without meat today? Replacing it with veggies. Take a hot bath with salt before bed. Try to relax into the bath, allowing the muscles to unwind. All right. So now we're coming up to Friday, November 11th, which is tomorrow, 11-11. So new challenge after the 10-day mark. If you don't make your bed up, make your bed up. Your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. 
All right. Now, you once again get to choose between 20 minutes of Ashtanga Yoga or the guided half primary. Okay. And then you'll take your cold shower. And then once again, you have the option to pick between sound bowl healing and meditation. Again, whichever one is triggering you the most is the one I would suggest doing. Don't run from it. Stay. In fact, let's like let's make this the theme of this video today. What would happen if you stayed? When things get uncomfortable, what would happen if you stayed? All right. You're going to have your food journal, journal again tomorrow. And then tomorrow, questions to ask yourself, how do you feel when you messaged your old friend or family member yesterday? How did that make you feel? What emotions came up when you sent that simple text message to someone you had lost touch with? Did they respond? If there was a conversation, how did it go? Were there old feelings that came up? Are there any friends or family in your life that you fear may be toxic to you? If so, why? What are those toxic relationships teaching you? Are you good at sound at boundaries or is this something you struggle with? Boundaries are something that I have struggled with in my life for sure. Are you toxic to yourself at times? If so, how? What are some toxic things or self-sabotaging things you do that you can change? Are you recognizing any unhealthy patterns in your life? And that could be an unhealthy pattern that you realize you're going to bed too late or maybe not snacking after 7 p.m. has shown you where you do tend to snack, mindlessly snack because of emotions. Maybe that could be an unhealthy pattern. It doesn't matter. This is private. This is totally up to you. Are you feeling empowered to create healthier patterns? Name one unhealthy pattern, self-sabotaging behavior you have. Name one thing you can do to heal the unhealthy pattern. What emotions come up with the exploring this topic? So this is a hard, heavy topic. And that's the reason why today on day 10, I'm encouraging you to just send a text because tomorrow we are going to explore how you felt about that. What emotions, how did you react to having to reach out to someone that you had lost touch with? How did they respond? How did you react? Okay, this is all an exploration to see where there are wounds within you. Okay. Name one thing, okay, name one thing you can do to heal the unhealthy pattern. What emotions are coming up with exploring this topic? Then five things you like about yourself and list five things you are grateful to for today. So tomorrow, after you do this exercise of texting your long lost friend or family member, you might be carrying extra emotions tomorrow. You might be pulling up some unresolved issues that need to be resolved within you. Okay, and that's the sole reason why we're doing this is to try to explore all of your wounds. All right. So, and the reason why this journal entry is coming the day after you do the exercise is because I want you to have 24 hours to really explore what's coming up, how you're feeling about the situation. Um, if you get triggered by doing that, what unhealthy patterns are you doing to cover the trigger? If you get triggered, once again, when that trigger comes, instead of running from it, can you stay? Can you stay and explore it? All right, because that's where it's juicy, right? That's where it's interesting. Okay, and then of course you have your oil bath optional tomorrow night if you want to take an oil bath because tomorrow, Saturday, or sorry, not tomorrow, but Saturday is again your rest day, which we'll talk more about what's happening on Saturday to, on tomorrow's video. So once again, I want to reiterate, guys, what you're doing today with texting a long lost family member or friend, if it invokes emotions in you, I want you to explore those because tomorrow on Friday, you're going to be journaling about those. And there's a reason why, again, before this exercise, I had you do kickboxing the day before light yoga and the day before that you started kickboxing. We're trying to pull things up, really pull, pull things up. So I hope that makes sense. There is a total method to my madness with this challenge. I haven't spent 16 years studying this shit for nothing. I know exactly why I'm doing this. I'm ex I'm ex I'm pushing your with these exercises with these journaling. I'm trying to push certain buttons in you to see what happens so that you can start to heal yourself so that you can start to explore your own behavior patterns so that you can start to create healthier patterning and start to self heal if that makes sense. If you have any questions about that again, ask me down in the comment section below. And so after we do this exercise, there's going to be even more exercises where we're going to try to get to the, the deep root of where our suffering comes from. And as my friend Cindy says, 
And she's so right. Without the suffering, there can't be the mystic. Without the suffering, there can't be friction. Without the suffering, there can't be change. Without suffering, we don't ask questions. If everything was just easy peasy, easy peasy and hunky dory, we would never contemplate life. We would never explore ourselves. We would never explore the magic of being human. So once again, I'm going to ask you, when things get uncomfortable, can you stay?